for for a wrestler than I've seen than that. Um, as far as being mapped out and like, all those main events, beating someone like The Rock for your first time, I, I you know I, I don't think I've ever seen a better like sort of wrestling calendar year of a guy sort of get to the top as fast as he did doing all those well, things. No. When I think of rapid ascensions to the top, there's only two names I think of. I think of Brock and I think of Kurt Angle, but there's yeah. only two I think. Yeah. Well, this is uh, well as we say that. I mean, we're gonna we're obviously gonna get a match now with the Undertaker, uh, who, as I said, you know, he last beat Hogan and he was doing this kind of uh, heel gimmick at the time, and he'll be going up against Triple H, Matt, which I think is gonna be a, a pretty decent match when you consider their history. Um, but just to go back to our King of the Ring winner, um, I wonder, Matt, if what would have happened if, for instance, Brock Lesnar didn't go off to American football and in the UFC, and if he'd have been around those sort of 10 years, do you think the landscape would have been totally different? Um, you know, and, and John Cena would have been a different kind of uh, thing altogether? Uh, well, you know, I, I assume John Cena still would have come about and under the like, way that he did, and you know, he still would have generated that popularity. But it would have been a level like we saw with The Rock and Austin, wouldn't it? it there would have been two guys there. There would have been two top top talents. Um, I'm not too sure how much the Brock Lesnar effect would have impacted someone like Batista, though, because Goldberg leaving left the void for a giant kind of monster kind of person yeah. to come in and dominate the scene. But I'm pretty sure that, you know, if Brock had stuck around a little bit, he would have been SmackDown's kind of top, top guy when Batista was doing it instead. Sure, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Well, this is uh, this looks like it's going to be a pretty brutal sort of match between these two, doesn't it, now? Between uh, Taker and Triple H. And uh, as I said, Triple H was the baby face at this time. And uh, up against The Undertaker. But what a roster um, overall that they had. I can't, um, I can't keep saying that enough when you look at the depth that they had. Of course, two big sort of WWE guys. And of course, this was a time that even though they had two brands, Matt, they only had one, one belt. Going between both, yeah. which uh, which I do did prefer and still do prefer to be fair. Um, when you have two, it does complicate things, it makes it a little bit more political. Who goes on last and who's got the real one and all the rest of it. Yeah, it was like a bold statement, wasn't it? I mean, to have that much talent and you know just to have the one belt really did say a lot about the person that carried that title. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that they got Brock on there and they got the Rock and all this other stuff, it was it was huge, wasn't it? Any any time of time they had an injury, there was always cover at the yeah. top. And there was always someone ready to step in and take the space because that was a huge, huge thing. Because nowadays we don't have that. If we had a couple of injuries on one of the brands these days, it's it's a huge problem for WWE. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with that. And so we see Paul Heyman... Um, <laughs> Talking to Jerry Lawler there about his client winning. Take it he's going to be out here calling this match because uh, of course one of these two could be his opponent, but uh, would eventually end up not being that way. But... So here we go, the Undertaker on the bike, still in this mode, but. Uh, you know, I, I kind of liked this Undertaker, this version. I felt this was like when he was this hill. It was like a real... It was like the first time he he turned hill under this sort of biker gimmick that he was doing. But uh, I think he, he played it pretty well. He was a bit of a bully guy. I mean, all, all the stuff with Jeff Hardy that happened and Maven especially as well. I think you remember that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and... If not my favourite Undertaker kind of character, but I do get the, necess the necessity of this Undertaker mm -hmm. character. Yeah. Because he did introduce a whole new kind of move set into his arsenal, and mm -hmm. he did introduce a new kind of attitude, and it really did get the fans longing for the old kind of Undertaker. Yeah. Whereas if it just stayed in the same old gimmick, it really could have become stale. Yeah, totally. This is going to be a, an interesting uh, match. Interesting to see 
Triple H, of course, who's here. Now, you'd have been still a big Triple H fan, I'm guessing, Matt, at this point as well. Yeah, it definitely would have been like one of the heights of my Triple H mm -hmm. fandom. You know, not that I'm not now. It's just like this point, he was sort of top of his game at this point, you could say. Yeah. And of course, Triple H, our 1997 winner of the King of the Ring. Show where he's come off the bat. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I have to say, I do not remember anything about this match whatsoever. I don't know if you have any memories of this match at all, Matt. Between these no, two at this I, don't, point. I don't really remember much about this, I've got to say. Uh, they, they had yeah, many I've, awards at, at WrestleManias, didn't they? Yeah, I was about to say, these guys have met on many occasions, so it's, it's kind of hard to pinpoint one specific one at any one time, but this mm. one's one's a slip my mind for sure. Yeah. I remember they had the whole kind of thing where um, it was the two-man power trip against the Brothers' Destruction. That thing went on for quite a while, but um, yeah. that was around, it was quite close to this time, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure what exact time that was. Yeah. Yeah, I can't re quite recall when all that happened, but yeah, I do know what you mean there. So this one's going to be uh, this one's going to be interesting, of course, for the WWE title. These two going at it. Uh, of course, El Hefner has to be the referee for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's exit out of there wouldn't be too long from here, I'm guessing. Like you're thinking, this is about two hours, ten minutes into the pay per view, uh, so this is given a fair old amount of time for a main event as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's always a good sign because these days the main events can be far yeah. too short. We're talking about ten, fifteen minutes sometimes nowadays. <laughs> or a minute. <laughs> yeah. <Some of> <laughs> Let's not forget that. Yeah. So these two, I mean, I mean, both amazing, amazing. Even at this point, Matt, you'd have been looking at these two guys as both icons um, in WWE, considering the amount of like they, they would have wrestled at like last year's WrestleMania on this like 2001 as well at WrestleMania. Yeah. So yeah. The battles that these two had had. Uh, absolutely amazing at this point people were talking about the undertaker you know it's his yard and all the rest of it like he's been around for so long and yet here we are he's still here ever present at our wrestlemanias and stuff in between you know what a what a what a run do you ever think there'll be ever anybody like the undertaker ever again matt is he a complete one-off special kind yeah. of attraction I've, I've I've got to say, Undertaker will be a one-off, you know. I mean, I don't think there's any ifs, maybes about it. He is a true, through-and-through -through legend. And it's, it's like to come up with someone with that kind of size, mm -hmm. that kind of agility, who generates that kind of aura, that kind of respect within the business, mm -hmm. I don't think you could ever see that kind of thing again. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. And of course, same could be said to uh, Triple H, who's still, well, I mean, I don't know, if he's definitely not in, inactive, because he, he wrestles <laughs> when he needs to, doesn't he? Uh, when he's called upon, when uh, desperate yeah, I mean, times, he's there. I love that kind of old school mentality, where you don't say you're retiring, unless you're retiring, you know? Mm. You can just disappear from the scene for months at a time, maybe even years, and then come back. Um, Undertaker, of course, he's never announced his retirement, uh, and nor has Triple H. But Shawn Michaels did, and he stuck to it, and yeah. I admire that. And that kind of also, because when you get people that that have their retirement, people like Ric Flair, you know, no offense to the guy, but if you say you're going to retire, it really tarnishes your memory if you come back and have a lesser match yeah. after one that Shawn Michaels gave you, and you couldn't wish for a better exit from the company or the business. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that one. You don't want uh, you don't want to be keep coming back after something like that. 
There was, was a big debate about this year's Royal Rumble coming up, Matt, whether Shawn Michaels oh, might yeah. be coming back or not. Yeah. Yeah, he would definitely have to be under some like extreme circumstances, and they, they would all have to fall under the right category. I don't see him just coming back just for the sake of it. You know, mm-hmm. it would all have to make sense. Um, even to the point now where I've, I've read like interviews with Jericho, where we know Jericho comes back and leaves the company quite frequently, but he doesn't yeah. come back for anything. He, he likes to actually make sure that he has a place in the company and that he's serving a purpose, not just come back for the sake of coming back. What are you making of the uh, What do you make of the match so far, Matt? Again, yeah, pretty good. A, I mean, typical. it was never going to be not good with these mm. two guys in it. These are like what you would call two genuine ring generals, you mm. know. At any point in time, they can just, they could come up with this off the fly, you know. Yeah. They really would not even have to rehearse this or anything because they could just got to look at each other in the ring and know exactly what the other guy's thinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I, I've heard people before as well criticise Triple H saying that He's not kind of a wrestler that can produce five-star matches like consistently, but you know, even if you, even if that was the case, which I, I'm, I'm sure it's not. I mean, I've seen him at Triple H have many, many great matches, you know. Um, but you know, he gets the other person across so, so well. Mm-hmm. And often, like what we talk about, is that lost art of selling. And Triple H mm-hmm. definitely, it's one of the great kind of people at selling moves uh, and selling the other person as a real threat to him as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. No, I wouldn't be Brett, would it? <laughs> yeah, <I'd be> <laughs> it might have been actually. It could have been him. Mm-hmm. He said a few things. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you can look at it so many different ways. People will say Triple H has played the politics game, but, you know, he's where... The thing is, he's in the situation he's in. He's damned if he does and he's damned if he don't sort of thing. Um, I think you're just... You're open for more criticism because he's in that, the, the situation he's in. Um, you know, married to the boss's daughter. You're always going to get that sort of, like, jealousy almost from the other stars and a lot of the fans and all the rest of it but you know there was I've only felt it like a few times where I felt like oh you know there's been stuff where I felt like he didn't sometimes um, you know more towards the end of his career where I felt like god you know I wish he'd he'd move on past the the matches with Randy Orton that he had and stuff like that like I I really didn't enjoy the match he had at Wrestlemania 25 um, with Orton and I felt like he he really pushed towards it. Like it, I, I almost feel like Triple H really wanted Randy to be the next guy, but he just couldn't. Randy just didn't have the heart that uh, Triple H probably thought that he, you know, he had to have um, to come up trumps and you know be that next guy. But I feel like Triple H pinpointed Randy Orton as the next guy to take the mantle. But obviously, it didn't work out like that. And, and John Cena would be that guy, in fact. Um, Eventually, but it, it, but for a long time, mate, it seemed like he was grooming uh, Randy for that that spot and doing everything he possibly could to uh, to make it work. Yeah. yeah, it definitely reminds me of the the formation of Evolution. And when Triple H said it, I have no doubt he actually believed wholeheartedly in it when he said Randy Orton was the coal that will be crushed into the next diamond. Mm-hmm. You know, I had no doubt that that actually meant that he was going to do everything in his power to kind of. Uh, to help make that happen mm-hmm. and when I've seen Randy Orton's documentaries and stuff and learnt about all the stuff that happened behind the scenes and how Randy felt a little bit entitled it's like it kind of backfired a little bit like yeah. he got a little bit of a, an ego trip about it and mm-hmm. took things a little bit for granted and mm-hmm. you know Triple H would put him aside and tell him how things should be but you know I think it kind of hindered him a little bit mm-hmm. and sometimes it can happen that way I'm sure like um even people like Brock, you know, uh, he, he kind of, he does boost your ego. You do kind of think that you can go out and accomplish these great things with kind of the minimal kind of effort. But, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you kind of come crashing down back to reality. And now, after all the stuff that happened with Brock and then he went off to do his football and it didn't pan out, but then he, he refocused on new kind of ventures within the UFC, conquered that and comes back stronger than ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and... With the John Cena thing as well, when he became the top face in the company, it was kind of a...